It's everything I wanted by Chibi talking about the 100 girlfriends that really, 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 really love you. Let's see what he got to say. We have had... I think a lot of people have probably mm. have had a series they've read over the years. A yeah. manga, a light novel, or they watched an anime to where there is multiple female love interest for a kid. Harem. Harem show, right? Shameless harem. We love the harem here. Character, and your favorite female character doesn't win because he's... Childhood friend never wins. So they're the childhood friend. There it or is. They're just not the main female character that is the poster cover girl of the yeah. series. Basically, I think everybody that reads these type of series, like harems or rom com. So is it harem or is it harem? So when I hear it in Japanese pronunciation, they call it Issei goes harem, but it's like, is it harem or is it harem? I just say harem. Those are just romance in general usually feel very much disappointment at the end of those stories because of who the yeah. MC ends up with. Yeah. However, the 100 girlfriends who really, really love you. No, it's really, 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 really love you. This title right here is shortened. Do you notice this? Look at this. On Crunchyroll, I think, the title here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the fifth one is fully capitalized. But here, they only have three here because they ran out of fucking limited character space. This fucking show is a spin on that genre. It is a spin to a where deconstruction. nobody loses. Apparently, every single character wins. wins. Uh huh. And the whole premise of the show is literally about that. And it's just so amazing. Good. It it's is amazing. such a good series because it's like our man Rintaro, our main male character, has to riz up a hundred different girls. Yep. Because if he does not, they'll die. They will die. Literally and die. Could you could you imagine if someone actually dies here though? Like, I don't think this anime would ever go towards something that dark. And based off of what we've seen, we're only anime only, right? The anime is very lighthearted. It's just fast-paced fun. I don't see there ever being a super dramatic moment. There could be some melodrama. There could be some moments where there's some sad elements being covered. Maybe you were talking about some past trauma. Maybe some tragedy from the past. But I don't think someone is literally going to die because Rentaro forgot to, you know, riz them up. But it would be insane. It's a very dramatic plot. With a very comfy feeling story because yeah. he has to have all these individual characters legitimately feel like they're blessed. Like they have a really good life. And it is a true harem story. It is not one of those stories to where an MC is being a beta male and not That's being right. able to choose who he Have you noticed Rentaro's eyebrows, by the way? Wait, 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 wait. Look, look at this. Look at this. Rentaro 100 girlfriend eyebrow. I hope I don't get spoiled by some manga panel right now. Forget, don't, careful guys, careful guys, but this dude's fucking eyebrows are so bushy. It is some, it, it is literally Rock Lee eyebrow, dude. I think it's the kind of show that he is a giga chat. This dude is full of peak testosterone. He is no beta cuck main character. No, 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 no. My man is an alpha giga chat pole. And in this current meta of rom-coms where every male male character, how many times have you seen an anime where the fucking male character is a spineless coward fucking shut-in weeb virgin? I'm a weeb too. We're, we're weeb virgin. Nothing wrong with being a virgin. But you'll see that there's a lot of these soft-spoken, very shy, submissive dudes that somehow gets bailed out by a super alpha giga chat. Usually it's the Gyaru right now. The gal archetype is saving that. But right now it's refreshing to see a male character that actually <laughs> isn't one of those. He wants to be with, etc. for out like 200 to 300 chapters. No, this series is not that. Literally at the end of this chapter, Rintaro, or this episode, Rintaro is like, hey, mm. you both will be my girlfriends. Yep. And he convinces both of them by using the massive riz that this dude has to be able to convince them. He has a... It actually was Riz because the whole episode was grounded upon these two girls looking for four leaf clovers, but they couldn't find it. What does Rentaro then do? He goes out and finds it. He comes, sh he, he shows up with them and the girls are like, why are you so dirty? And then he explains that, you know, all night last night I was looking for, you know, four leaf clovers for you guys. And it's like, damn, damn, the Riz is immaculate. Sundere and just this lovey dovey girl that both love him right there. And it's yeah. just, that's two out of the 100 girlfriends that he has to riz that's up. That's two. So just yeah, 98 more. It. Okay, what is this show about? And 100 girlfriends that really, 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 really love you. That's it. Why am I hyping it up? Because I know everybody, when they think of a romance, rom-com, harem, etc., a lot of people are going to be instantly turned off. Because yeah. let's be honest. 
not everybody likes a slice of life series with, you know, romance, etc. And especially harems. Because it's like, how do you convince like the average, let's say, I'm not even shitting on shonen heads because I love shonen series. Like, like so let's say the most like brain dead, like Demon Slayer or Jujutsu Kaisen. I love these series. I cover them. But like, do you think that audience would ever watch rom-com? In my opinion, no. Because even me, when I used to only watch the big three back in the day, I had never fucking watched rom-com. I was like, I'm not touching that shit with a fucking thousand yard mile. No, 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 no. Harem, I feel like there might be some people in more inclined to watch it because it's more etchy and just, just the kids are horny. They're like, fuck it, we just want to see some titties. So they don't really care about the romance. They just want to see fan service. I don't know. I wonder if this show was really looked down upon by like the more mainstream public. I never really thought about that because I'm just in my own degenerate circle and every one of you are also in this degenerate wee bubble. So we don't really care about that. But I wonder what the mainstream public thinks. Because anyone that probably gets into anime and has watched anime probably has seen a fair share of harems yeah let's be honest have, and how many harem have we actually seen recently though it's only been date alive and fucking dxt but then konosuba is a harm in disguise there's a lot of shows that's a harm in disguise most isekais are harms in disguise in my opinion the main character just fucking builds an army of girls around them and when you watch one harem for the most part you've kind of seen them all like, there's just a lot of copy and paste yep. harem manga and anime throughout the industry. And if you've seen one anime, pretty much you kind of know the story beats and where it's going to go, etc. You know the cliches, you know about the beach episode, you know yeah. about the- The, the fire- the, the, the fucking- there's this hot spring episode, there's a beach episode, there's a summer festival episode, there's always the fireworks at the end where the girl tries to do the confession, but the fireworks happen just then, so nobody hears it, even though she confessed. So the author's like, ha ha, I made some development, but not really, nothing ever happens, and then she's gonna strip down a set of stairs, and she's gonna break her ankle, and then the main character's then gonna show up, and then gonna give a piggyback, and they're gonna walk in silence in the piggyback, and she's gonna be like, oh, he loves you so much, but nothing's gonna happen between them for the next fucking hundred chapters, because... That's how these shows, you know, how to milk content, right? Blow down to the plot, the beta male, you know, MC that doesn't yep. know who he wants to be with. Yep. But at the end of the day, you know he's going to be with the main cover girl because yep. that's just how the stories go. And Child of Friends always loses, yep. So, yes. I know many, when they first hear about what the concept of the show is, like it's a harem rom-com and all that, is just not going to even have interest. Yeah. But it is definitely not one of those. And I hear promise me out. you, from what I read of it, I got around chapter 30-something of the manga... It does not degrade, okay. at least from what I read. And people have continuously told me that it gets better and better as the story goes on. And that's the thing, because you got a hundred girlfriends. How could you possibly invest the same amount of time into each girl and not have uh, every other girl feel so, you know, like, um, not important? Like, I think Data Live suffer from this at a certain point because, you know, Kotori, Kotori, fucking Toka, Kurumi, Origami, like, these are the main girls in season one. And that's, the, and Yoshino too, but she's a lolly, so head pats only. Like, these girls are introduced from season one, so I'm very invested in them because we got to see a lot more of them. The girls that comes after in season two, three, and four, because they don't get as much screen time, you can't share it as much. I feel like I'm not as invested into them. 100 Girlfriends, I feel like it's going to have the same kind of problem, but I hear the author's also taking his time, his sweet time, investing his... You know, every girl is going to have their own little arc, and it's going to be the same amount proportionally to the other girls that exist. I don't know. And so judging by how the fans absolutely love this show, or love the manga, I'm willing to bet you it is straight quality. Like, yeah. it does not navigate or you know, kind of get away from what made this series popular and why people actually love it. There's a lot of attention to detail and a lot of love that is poured into the original series, a.k.a. the manga. Mm. That's not even including this anime. So I will say that if you're one of those individuals that just don't want to start this because you've already watched enough harems. And no, you haven't seen this. You have not seen this. Forget your understanding of what a harem or a rom-com is. You watch this shit, you'll be laughing more. Because, like, the thing about this show is... Rom I, 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 what I've noticed from watching a lot of rom-com is I enjoy rom-com more when it's less melodramatic, when it's less drama and more comedy, the action and comedy. Like Kaguya-sama, for example, there are some dramatic moments, but a lot of the other moments are very upbeat, fast-paced, you know, humor, comedy, you know, shit like that really makes the romance much more palpable. And I think 100 Girlfriend does the same thing. And stuff like that, disregard that notion and try this. I promise you, yes. it is different. It yes. is legitimately it is a peak. different anime. It is peak! Now, with that out of the way, let's actually get into this episode. Nothing can be perfect, okay? Not everything or nothing in this world can be perfect, but... Hakari's thighs are perfect. But if I had to put a label on 100 Girlfriends, this episode that came out, I would say that this was as... 9 out of 10, minimum. Close 
to perfection yeah. that this episode could have gotten. It yeah. is very close. Like, this is almost a masterpiece episode. Qual- Start to finish, episode one, I think, was so fucking good. And it, the pacing was so amazing. The only down part was, I guess, the dialogue with God. But that's still important setup. And they didn't waste too much time there. From start to finish, they handled introducing the show to fucking getting the confession and having two girlfriends in a way that was so enjoyable. Quality. Like, it is... Like, it may not have, like, fancy, fancy animation, like, fight Don't scenes, need that. Don't need that we have a Hakari thighs. Uh, but, because obviously this isn't that type of story. But what I'm saying is, is that in terms of adapting the story and keeping mm. the tone and elevating the content from the manga is actually impressive. Because yep. a lot of the gags and jokes within 100 Girlfriends is stuff that might not translate well into a anime setting. And a lot of the puns and jokes as well, since really? they're technically in Japanese, you know, they might be also... Lo- oh, like how Inda's name is literally derived from the Tsundere archetype, of it's not like I wanted to do something with you because blah, blah, blah. You know, I heard all the names are puns, stuff like, you know, pl- play on words off of the Japanese language that we wouldn't really understand, right? Lost in translation because of English audiences or anyone that watches, you know... 100 girlfriends in a different language with a different you know sub you know a lot of the translations could be like lost and you might not get the full joke but somehow at least from my experience of watching the english sub here everything translated very well with this episode and even some cut content like you know we had this uh the whole god scene where you know rentaro meets the god this scene is funny as fuck Funny as fuck, they immediately Baldy shows up, then this coil of rope puts on his head like it's some giant dookie, then he fucking blows on his shit wig, literally poop doo-doo wig, like he has hair. Funny, because it actually kind of breaks the fourth wall, and the very concept of, like, you know, this series, at least the manga, it's very self- Yo, do you think in high school DXC, you know how Mikhail has replaced God now? Do you think the God went on vacation is now God here? Do you think this is God from DXD? Where? of what it is and the ridiculous nature of what, you know, 100 Girlfriends really is. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's very self-aware of itself. And it seems like the anime is following that path. And actually, in some degree, even more self-aware than actually the manga. And I appreciate that because there's multiple things throughout this episode that is added in that's not actually even in the manga. And Mm. it's a nice adaptation that elevates it into the anime format. Like, you know, he mentions like, oh, you know, some of my lines were cut and all that. I I feel like some of my lines were edited out. It's like breaking the fourth wall to let's say, hey, come on, Baldy, keep on with it. We're here to see our 100 girlfriends, not your bald ass. And then you might end up, okay, okay, let's move on. You know, stuff like that. That's just kind of a nice little, nice little sprinkle. Cut out to, you know, save time. You know, this god guy talks about that, breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. And then he also, you know, we have little scenes here with, like, a, p- a paper on the wall that says, oh, you know, here's some details that you might not have known about if you're a manga reader. Basically saying, like, oh, yeah, even though you're a manga reader, there's still some details that's going to be added into this anime that will give a little bit of background history or context to some characters that you never knew about. I like that. It- it's just, it's nice. Immer- um, it's immersive. And it- Damn, Chibi was really paying attention to shit like that, and I was just sitting here just laughing my ass up because this baldy had a rope just drop on his head looking like a coil of dookie on top. He is really assessing what's going on, and I'm just fucking memeing. It breaks the fourth wall at the proper times, and it just, it really draws you in. It knows how to reel you in, but also disconnect you at the same time to really just enjoy what you're watching and be entertained by the first episode. Agreed. It's really good. Like, the the, the, the gags and stuff obviously can come off as subjective taste because obviously comedy is very, very subjective. Some people like, you know, let's say fart jokes, and then some people like... Ball jokes are always funny to me. Really dark humor. There, there's a vast difference between both of those. And obviously comedy does come down to the individual. But I do think that at the very least the way the comedy is translated into this, it definitely mm. will kind of grip those that, you know, have read the manga. Because, like, if you hear a joke or you read a joke and all that, you're not going to find it as funny. Let's be honest, okay? If you hear it over and over. But, yeah. you know, somehow, even though I knew what was going to happen this episode, and thanks to them adapting it into an anime... Totally different experience. Even if you know what's going to happen in the manga, I feel like the anime execution will be totally different. I still laughed considerably yeah. while watching this. I was smiling and laughing while watching this, even though I knew some jokes were coming and then some jokes that were even added in. This is what I like to say that did a proper adaptation and elevated the source material to a whole new level when it comes to the show. I 
I would say true, but I haven't read the manga, so I'll say sure. I'm just very impressed by the attention to detail episode one had. Now with that all mentioned though, I do want to talk about a few things with the overarching plot of this first episode for anime only, because I've been talking a lot about just the adaptation and how well it's been. Now, when it comes to the actual plot, Rintaro finds out something very, very dark. He finds out... That the girlfriends will die if you don't riz them up. That if he does not riz up 100 yep. girls, basically, that is destined to him as soulmates, they will die. Like, they oh, will no. straight up die. And this adds a nice <laughs> layer of dramatic, like, tone to the story. Is anyone taking this seriously, though? Is anyone considering that part of girls dying seriously? And if the show has a plot twist of when someone actually almost dying or something, maybe it takes some time. Maybe some neglect will end up. The girl won't get immediately killed. Maybe it'll take some time. But I don't think anyone is paying attention to that. People are too distracted by this girl's fucking thighs. Even though it's obviously comedy in nature, it basically kind of gives a reason to why Rintaro cannot give up and he has to get all 100. Because if he doesn't actually go out with all 100, any of those yeah. could die. And just be lonely for the rest of their lives. They will never find another soulmate. They'll never be with anyone. They were destined to be alone and die alone. And that's just a very that's dark cold. outlook on that's life, cold. so to speak. And Rintaro being a very happy-go-lucky and very generous individual that really loves people, he doesn't want that. And so his mission, his goal, is to give these 100 different girls as much love as he can. And Which is so crazy, because... When you think about a main character that's going to have a hundred girlfriends, you're going to need a main character that is so kind. You can't have like a douchebag. You can't have like a freed kind of guy. You can't have some douchebag dude that's taking advantage of these girls. No. At every point, the girls are so happy that Rentaro is like being so kind and appreciative. At every point, Rentaro is always self serve Like... He's not, he's not selfish. He's always giving. So it's like the girls are lucky. It's not Rentaro that's lucky. It's the girls are lucky to have Rentaro's love like that, which is a very smart way for the author to handle this main character. Because obviously in the context of a harm and like a main character enjoying these girls, it's like, how can you have it in such a way that it doesn't rub off the wrong way? And the Rentaro kind of character he is, it, it's actually so good. And it's just like, obviously it pushes the boundary of just how much can you really do as one individual with a hundred different people, but it really is just inspiring and it's very comfy. It doesn't try to be too, too serious, but it's yes. emotional and it does make you just really respect the character because once again, he is not a beta male. He's clearly someone that really knows how to use Riz and just be- a Again, again, again. All you need to do is see these eyebrows right here, bro. Look at these eyebrows, dude. This is not... He's got genetics from like a fucking shogun. I don't know, some kind of imperial samurai genetics. Look at these eyebrows, bro. A great Giga Chad character. Just, yeah. I love him. He, yeah. Rintaro is such a good MC. Last time I think I saw a main character from a rom -com that I actually enjoyed was Bunny Girl Senpai. He was very super alpha and just like straightforward. I love that too. For a story, he's a very refreshing breath of fresh air yes. and i think that you know the the very undertones of that you know with the story plays very well with his character and speaking of other things there's nice little attention to details that is actually throughout this episode the mole on hakari's right upper thigh the cameraman made sure that we saw that there's a little there's a little dark spot right on her upper thigh i think do, does she be talk about it she be and what talk i mean about by it. that is is that we have Character detail. Chibi, come on! It's like, her mole that's on her thigh oh! is actually in this episode. Oh! And I know that seems very minor, and not a lot of people... It is not minor. The cameraman made sure that we knew that it existed there multiple times. People might care too much about that, and only manga readers will really know oh, this yeah. detail, but they did put it in this episode. Pre-watch? Nah! You know why? Because if you go back into the VOD, you can see the video, if it had a red bar or on, an, on or not. Nah, nah, I'm just a react god, dude. My fucking sick senses, uh-uh. He and I, Chibi and I are very much alike in team right now. We are fixated on that mole on the upper thigh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I want to clarify a few things. This isn't a spoiler, it's just it's something very important. Is that the animators that made this episode, 
to kind of go in length to add a mole, a little dot, so to yeah. speak, on her thigh. Show it! Briefly in one Show scene, it! Kind of shows that they really do have a... T was not in one scene. There was multiple scenes. I knew at least it was not just a single scene. No, 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 because I was too invested into that mole. Attention detail, and they are passionate about this project because the <laughs> animator that had to draw those scenes, etc., you know, they didn't need to do that. It was such no. a minor detail with a little dot that it's like... Not everybody's going to notice. Most people that watch this, even manga readers, are probably not even really going to notice that or think about I that. I noticed. I first. saw that but shit, the fact bro. That, that was added in for her character, and there is a little mole on her. Mm -hmm. It kind of shows that, yeah, they don't want to miss any details. They really do want to add everything. They don't want. Isn't it crazy that right now we're forming an argument as to why the animators, the studio, care so much about this show? And the proof of that is the existence of the mole in her upper thigh. Isn't it crazy? This is <laughs> just anime community in a nutshell. And I'm all for it, dude. I don't want to really cut content if they don't have to. And I think that really just shows the dedication of the yep. staff. That they yep. really will Salute. go at links to do anything Salute they can staff. to make sure that, you know, this really is elevating the source material. Uh -huh. So, yeah, there, there's uh -huh. little details here and there. There's obviously great art and animation throughout this episode. I love these characters. And honestly, this tsundere is absolutely yes. amazing. And Karane is so good. She is so tsundere. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of grew out of tsundere's over the years. Like I did too. I always felt like they were just very annoying. Mm. And I just eventually kind of like, I don't care about them too much. But... It's life this, is a, life is like a circle. It's like a boomerang. You get tired of Sundays. You can't really appreciate them when you're like younger. You just seem like they're kind of bitchy. But the more older you get, the more complex your 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 palate, right? Your palate, the the taste flavor of different archetype of girls, and you start to realize that Sundays. You know what? I like that abuse just a little bit. Although she beats the shit out of him. Sundere is honestly done just so well yeah. that I just, even me that doesn't really care about Tsundere's anymore, I'm like, yo, she's actually a really good Tsundere. She's a mm. good character. She has enough Dere and Soon in her character to have a nice blend. It's not yeah. just all Soon Soon, so to speak. I Soon Soon is the worth when it's like, Soon Soon basically means Soon is, so it's a Soon Dere, right? Dere is like the really blushy, just like always just like happy kind of part. It's like the Karane that you see when she's actually super docile. But then the Sun part is like the bitchy part. And soon, soon you can imagine it's just all bitch. And it's just like, what's, what's the appeal in that, right? I really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to shout out 100 girlfriends that really, really love you. Absolutely. Because... Again, it's really, 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 really love this... you. This this is a good show, and it it's deserves a special to be one. talked about. I've been patiently awaiting this. The only thing I am curious about now with this show is, is how the voice acting is going to be. I mean, voice acting so far has been excellent. What do you mean? But I am legitimately curious on how they're going to execute like the voice acting for a hundred different characters. Like oh, yeah. that's going to be absolutely expensive. The budget is going to be insane. We'll have insane. to see where that one goes. But um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. Dub video from Chibi as always. Please go give it a like. And guys. I know you're watching this on YouTube. We do live stream these reactions. If you want to check it out, 7 a.m. Pacific time every weekday. And until next time, take care. And that's the video. Ah, shit.